Hey, welcome back to The Console Log, a weekly show about JavaScript and all the things that go on in the web. Uh, this has been a big week for this show in general. Uh, I have gotten a lot of support from people out there, so thank you very much if you have been showing your support. If you haven't, just by watching this, that is a show of support, so thank you as well. Uh, there are three big uh, housekeeping items that I wanna talk about in terms of this show, but if you wanna just get to like the thick of it all and the meat of just like the news that you came here to see anyways, uh, go to this timestamp below that I'll figure out when I'm doing post editing, because right now it might be at two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five. <laughs> Keep it alive. So the three things that I want to talk about for the console log is that one, uh, we reached over a hundred subscribers. Like that is, I would never, I was gonna, I was hoping that would take less than three months and it took less than one month and that is just, yeah, it's really cool. I'm really excited about that. Number two is that, <coughs> choking. <coughs> Uh, you should uh, swallow, then speak. Don't do the same at the same time because that leads to coughing. But number two is that uh, there is now a website for the console log. The address is very confusing and hard to remember. It is theconsolelog.com. But I had a fun time making that. It uses the fun little JavaScript effect, but mostly just redirects you to this YouTube playlist. Happy to hear suggestions on what else you'd want to be there. If I could have individual shows, more show notes, more conversation there. Curious to hear what you have in mind. Uh, and number three is that I now have a Twitter account just for the console log, which is uh, at underscore the console log because the Twitter handle without the underscore was taken. So I added the underscore instead. Okay, well, enough housekeeping being done. Let's get to what happened this past week. Number one this week is the auto code formatting tool Prettier is now adding support amongst uh, JavaScript, CSS, GraphQL. They are now adding support for Markdown, which cool, because I write a lot of Markdown, but I'm actually writing the uh, notes for this show. I write them in Markdown. So I don't know if that's gonna help me actually make better notes, but when I do use Prettier for auto formatting my Markdown files, and you see these uh, shows become a little bit more clear, you might have Prettier to thank for that because now you'll be able to write some very messy Markdown code, hit save, and Prettier will make that thing shine, sparkle. Number dos is that uh, GitHub came out with their State of the Octoverse 2017. And this is something that they do about every year where they get, uh, take a little bit of time to uh, stand back and just kind of see what has gone on in GitHub in the past year. And this uh, single page uh, website is just packed with a lot of facts and information that are pretty interesting. Uh, they recap, they talk about um, how many commits were done since last year, how many active repos are still uh, in use in the past year, how many issues, repository tags, active repositories, just like a plethora of information is just jam-packed into this one uh, website. Uh, definitely dive into it more if you want more details. What I find most interesting about this uh, website was they talked about the 15 most popular languages on GitHub. And I, for now, shall recite them to you in uh, alarmingly fast, uh, speed because I try to make these videos short and the more I talk the more time it takes to Okay, but the first one you'll never guess the first language it is Yeah, it's JavaScript So I'm glad that I'm making this show about JavaScript because then I have a big audience to talk to <laughs> uh, JavaScript is the biggest with 2.3 million uh, uh, Repos using job or something. I don't know uh, number two is Python with 1 million. Number three is Java with 986,000. Uh, number four is Ruby with 870,000. Uh, then we have uh, PHP, C++, CSS, C Sharp, Go, C, TypeScript, which is also JavaScript, uh, Shell, Swift, Scala, and finally, Objective-C. Uh, definitely go check out the report if you are interested. It has a lot of information in there. I found that the most interesting. Uh, JavaScript is rising and rising and rising. And hopefully this show will too. Number three on my palm of my hand is 
there was a new blog post on the Ember blog about Glimmer.js. Uh, Glimmer.js, in case you are not familiar with the Ember world, it is a standalone library that was designed for building uh, modern UI components, specifically geared towards mobile. That is their uh, first platform they're targeting, which is a hard bar to aim for, but if they can hit that, then they have a lot of room to grow from there. Uh, the two motivations for having the Glimmer uh, library, uh, as reported on the blog post, was one, to uh, allow people to incrementally adopt parts of the Ember framework if they're not all bought in, which means that you could use Glimmer instead of all of Ember if you want to just render some UI. And uh, two, which I think is most salient to this blog post, as a laboratory where they can actually uh, experiment with APIs and ways of using components uh, differently than how Ember does it. Because Ember prides themselves, and I think it's a great uh, source of pride to not have a lot of churn in their space so that if you are using Ember, you are confident that what you write will still run. Uh, and if they do make changes, you can easily grow with the framework. However, there is need to have a room to experiment and try things that may not be a little as stable. And that's what Glimmer.js does. Uh, they have a few uh, new things that they're changing since the 1.0 release of Glimmer.js. Uh, some of the highlights that they have there are that they are now using a capital named style component, similar to React. So before you could have a Glimmer component which looked like a web component, uh, and because of reasons where web components still aren't, they still aren't here. They, they need to come, but they're still not here. Uh, uh, it causes a little conflict to know when you're writing a Glimmer component as opposed to a web component. So to uh, reduce that, that ambiguity, Glimmer is now adopting the similar style of React where your custom component is using a capital uh, letter as the first name. And there is more that they're changing in Glimmer, but I don't want to take too much of your time to talk about that. If you are interested in that, definitely check out the blog post. It has all this information there. But the two things are the new change in how you write components and also um, the feature about the DOM attributes. But uh, great to see things getting pushed forward. New things are always good. They're good. And number four, to round off this week of JavaScript news, that sweet JavaScript news, is another release, which is Vue 2.5, released into the wild safari of the public domain of NPM packages and JavaScript code. Well, the new things about uh, Vue.js is... Uh, better TypeScript integration. So if you are a TypeScript user and a Vue user, uh, your roles have now gotten better. So thank you, Vue. Uh, another thing that's really cool is that Vue now has a better error handling via this thing they're calling the error captured hook. If you have read about the React 16 uh, error boundaries, which I believe I talked about in a previous video, that is pretty similar. So that's parity in terms of functionality. Um, Better support for functional components and single file components. So uh, Vue supports the ability to write your entire component in one file called uh, uh, with the extension of .vue. And they're adding better support for writing functional components, i.e. those without uh, state internal, uh, with that single file component. That's cool. I had no idea that that existed, so I had to learn about that to talk to you about that, and hopefully I understood it well enough that I can make you understand it well enough now, so now you actually have an understanding of it that I can understand it. And last but not least is environment agnostic uh, server-side rendering. This, I think, is kind of being underplayed, but actually really exciting. It means that now you can actually render your view application not just with Node. So you can actually use, uh, the example they use there is uh, PHP.js. You can actually, so, so Vue.js is used a lot in the Laravel community, uh, which is the PHP uh, framework. And adding support to actually render your view application on the server within the context of PHP, that's really powerful. Uh, if there is a mismatch between the client and the server, let's say you have you know Java on the back end, you want to have the ability to render your code on Java, this is the first steps towards getting there. So uh, I hope to see that uh, uh, feature find its way into other frameworks as well, React, Angular, Ember, because that is really, really exciting. Really. Really. No, it, it, I'm serious. Okay, that was your week of links at the console log. I hope you had a good time because I had a good time telling you to have a good time. So uh, definitely check back next week. 
I usually post these late Sunday, but no later than Monday morning because I have a little time to have some insomnia where I edit it into the wee hours of Sunday morning and never sleep for your entertainment. Any case, uh, I hope you have a great week and I hope you log some things to your console this week in honor of this show. Uh, see ya next week.